Hello and welcome to the session in which we would look at variances. However, we're going to be using journal entries. In the prior session, we looked at the standard cost system and we learned about variances, which is the difference between the actual cost and standard cost. And we could have favorable variances when the actual cost is less than the standard cost, or we might have what's called unfavorable variances when the actual costs are greater than the standard cost. And to account for these variances, companies may use separate ledgers, such as material price variance, labor efficiency variance. So we have many variances, and we learned about those in the prior session. In this session, we're going to be learning about how companies journalize those variances. So companies, they use credit for favorable variance to indicate a reduction in cost or an increase in profit. So think of it as a contra expense when you have a favorable variance. Remember, favorable variance, it means it's you did not spend as much as you expected. It's favorable or you earn more revenue. That's, that's fine too. We could have also unfavorable variances from a journal entry perspective. Unfavorable variances, think of them as expenses. They take a debit. Now, the best way to illustrate this is to actually look at an example. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. No obligation, no credit card required. So starting with the price variance, let's assume Adam Company purchased 3,000 pounds of iron ore at $27 per pound. Now the standard cost list the cost per pound at $25. Now we are going to go ahead and journalize this entry and we have a variance here. So the first thing is we are computing a price variance. Can you tell me whether this price variance favorable or unfavorable? I hope you know this price variance is unfavorable. Why? Because we paid $27 for something we think we should pay for it 25 at least from our standard standard cost sheet we budgeted from standard cost system perspective $25 well how do we process this journal entry well let's start with the easy part what's the easy part i purchased 3000 pounds and i paid $27 per pound let's start there whether i paid cash or i purchased this on credit I'm responsible for 81,000, which is 3,000 pounds times $27. And I would like you to always stay start with this journal entry, which is involve cash or accounts payable. Now, I purchased inventory or raw material inventory or direct material inventory. You need to purchase the direct material inventory at the standard cost. What is my standard cost? My standard cost is I should have purchased the 3,000 pound at $25. And that would have gave me 75,000. Therefore, I debit direct material inventory 75,000 at the standard cost. But I actually paid 81,000. Well, the difference between the two is my variance. And we already know it's unfavorable variance because I paid extra $2 per pound and I purchased how many pounds? 3,000 pounds. Therefore, I have an unfavorable variance of $6,000. So I have a direct price or direct material price variance, which is a debit because it's unfavorable variance of $6,000. Now, obviously, if it was a favorable variance, it would have been rather than a debit. It would have been a credit. So this is an example of a price variance. Now, also, we could have a usage variance. During the month, let's assume Adam Company used the 3,000 pound of material to produce 400 units of XYZ. So XYZ is whatever we are producing. Now, the quantity, the standard quantity to produce one unit is seven pounds. So based on our standard, if we needed to produce those 400 units, 400 units, we should have used 
times 7, we should have used 2,800 pounds. Now, how many pounds did we use? We used 3,000 pounds. So we already know from this, from this angle that we also have an unfavorable, but here, usage. It means we used more than when we should have. Well, and how much more? It's specifically 200 pounds more. And also we paid more. If you notice, also we paid $2 more. So how do we process this journal entry? Well, now since we are using and we are producing, we're going to debit work and process. How much do we debit work and process? We're going to debit work and process the standard input. What's the standard input? The standard input should have been 400 units times 7 pound times $25. So that should have been the standard input, which is $70,000. So we're going to debit work and process $70,000 based on the standard input. Now, what did we take out of direct material? Well, we took out 3,000 pounds because we used actually, we actually used 3,000 pounds and we're going to take it out at standard cost of $25. Therefore, we credit direct material inventory to get the material out 3,000 pound at standard cost of 75. Notice here there's a difference between 70 and 75,000. Again, the difference is unfavorable. Why is it unfavorable? Because I used an additional 200 pounds at a standard cost of $25. That's going to give me an unfavorable variance of 5,000. Again, we have an unfavorable variance. An unfavorable variance will be reflected as a debit. Think of it as an extra cost. Think of it as an expense. Cost expenses are recorded with a debit. So this is an example of a usage for a uh, for the material. Let's take a look at labor variances. Also labor variances, we could have price or cost for the labor and the efficiency of the labor, whether the labor people did a good job finishing the job on time or they spent more time. Let's assume Adam Company spent 3,400 hours and they for 149,600 to complete the production of the 700 unit of XYZ company. Now, right from this information, I would, if I take 149,600 divided by 3,400 hours, I see that I paid $44 per hour for the employees. Why? Because this is how much I paid. This is how many hours they worked and they produce 700 unit. So my actual hourly rate, my actual is 44. Now, the standard calls for five direct labor hours for, e for, for each unit at a rate of $40. Well, the first thing I can tell you is this. If I was planning to spend $40 per hour, I already see that I spent $44. So from a price perspective, you know, I paid more for the labor. I paid $4 more. We'll get to that, but at least hopefully you can see this up front. Also, if I produced 700 unit and the standard call for five direct labor hour, I should have spent 3,500 hours. Guess what? I spent 3,400 hours. So what I have here for the efficiency, I have a favorable efficiency of 100 hours. So I just want you to see this before we dive into the journal entry. Now, the first thing I would start with is how much I paid or how much am I going to be accruing? It's 149,600. I credit accrual payroll, 149,600. Then I'm going to debit work and process because this is going to go work in process at the standard. What is the standard? The standard should have been 700 hours, seven, I'm sorry, 700 unit times five hours per unit. We should have spent 3,500 hours times the standard rate, $40. It should have been 140 thousand therefore i'm going to debit work and process inventory for the labor cost the standard one 140 notice it should have cost 140 it cost 149 600 what do we have we have variances now what variances do we have we already know that we paid four dollars extra per direct labor hour and how many hours did we incur 3400 so from a direct labor rate variance it was unfavorable the difference is $4 times 3,400. This was unfavorable variance of 13,600. Now we also know from a, not from a usage, from an efficiency perspective, we saved labor saved 100 hours. 
Well, at a standard cost of $40, we come up, we saved $4,000 on efficiency. So we have a direct labor efficiency variance. We did a good job. We saved 100 hours at $40. That's 4,000. Always make sure your journal entry will balances. For example, here, that's going to be 150, one, let me see, let's see, 153, 153, 600. And this is going to be 153, 600 as well. It's always good to make sure your journal entries are balancing. What should you do now? Go to Farhat Lectures to look at additional resources. That's going to help you understand this concept better. I know we learn about variances, but these are the journal entries for variances. You need to know how to record those journal entries. It's important whether you are studying for your CPA exam, CMA exam, taking a managerial accounting, a cost accounting, or some other accounting certification. Invest in yourself. Invest in your career. Good luck. Study hard. And of course, stay safe.